Hi, it's Kenneth Tex here with what will definitely be the last video in this series um, about Raspberry Pi uh, and compiling Linux from scratch 10.0 on it. Um, now, what I want to do in the last video is to um, show how we can create a boot partition with just a minimal uh, number of files necessary to start the Raspberry Pi. The default boot partition contains um, files for every Raspberry Pi model and obviously if you type on space or you just want to reduce your uh, system down to the minimum um, it's important to know which files to retain and which you can get rid of. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all is um, well, there's actually something else I want to do because um, I would like to do all the remaining configuration in the Linux from scratch system. But um, part of what we need to do, um, well, it's not something absolutely necessary. Actually, you could just copy the particular files you need from the boot partition and that will be done with it. What I wanted to show was um, how to get the latest files from um, the Raspberry Pi GitHub um, so that um, these can be uh, well you can keep the system up to date um, in case they you know fix these files and so on rather than just using the one that's on the Raspberry Pi it would mean that you'd have to boot the Raspberry Pi to allow it to update to obtain these fresher files and you got the issue with the fact that we've built a custom kernel, and, well, not that we've built a custom kernel, but we've built our own kernel. I am actually going to customize the kernel um, to make the fonts bigger for when we boot into Linux from scratch, uh, just to make it easier to see what's going on. <clears throat> um, but the first thing I'll do is to show how to get the um, files from the um, uh, Raspberry Pi um, GitHub repository. So what I'm going to do first of all is to go into, well, become the root first of all. And I'm in the roots directory now because I want these to be available when I boot into the LFS, I already need to be in the LFS route. I could be here, but it means I'd have to mount the SD card and uh, it's just a bit more palaver. So what I'm going to do is to change into the LFS route. So this is the root home directory on the LFS system. And what I'll do here is run the git program um, with the clone command um, in this location github.com forward slash raspberry pi forward slash firmware and what this will do is it will fetch this um, firmware directory from the repository um, and download it into the root home directory on the Linux from scratch system and the reason why I'm doing this, um, as I say, is to show you how you can uh, fetch updates for these this firmware files. It also contains some um, actual firmware that we haven't got installed at the moment. So when I updated the or rebuilt the kernel um, with the Raspberry Pi kernel, um, part of the installation was missing. If you notice that the um, Bluetooth icon's missing and that's because the firmware hasn't been installed from that um, kernel that we built and the firmware is contained within this directory structure so um, if you were to go into BLFS and um, install tools for Bluetooth access to use with Linux from scratch then you'd need the firmware files um, that are in this directory Um, as you can see, there's other other stuff in there. Um, 
T files that we're particularly interested in uh, the files in the boot directory so if we look at the boot directory you'll see it's virtually the same as um, the boot partition um, there's two significant files missing there's no command line .txt files so there's no default um, configuration for um, sending switches to the kernel as it boots and there's no config.txt so there's no way of um, telling the system how to configure itself as it boots up so that's two significant things to note so bearing that in mind I'm going to copy from the current boot partition both of those files to retain um, so that we can copy them into our new partition that will create um, um, if you like minimalist partition so I'm just going to copy them to I think I'm in root aren't I? yes into the Linux from scratch root home directory and I'll copy the config as well copy that here so that's um, all we need for when we boot into Linux from scratch <clears throat> so now I'm going to boot into Linux from scratch the next thing I'm going to do is to configure the kernel to use uh, bigger fonts. There's actually two ways of doing this. Um, in fact, that, yeah, I'll reboot first and then I can talk more about that maybe. So I'm going to shut this down as I usually do to give me a chance to extract the SD card so that it doesn't boot. Um, in fact, I could... Um, we could get it to boot from the SD card but yeah I'm not going to I'm just going to do it totally from the hard disk so I'm going to shut down the Raspberry Pi and move the SD card and now I'm going to power cycle it Okay, looks like I've got an error there to do with the INET 6. Like I said, I don't run that, so that may be why that's failed, but that's not important. So um, here I am in Linux from scratch. You can see that um, the... In fact, you can't see from there. If I do mount, you can see that the um, boot has got the uh, boot partition on the hard disk and partition 3 which is also obviously on the hard disk is mounted on the root and if I type in swap on you can see partition 2 which is a swap partition is also mounted as well so there's no mention in there of the SD card we are totally um, running from the hard disk um, Right, so the first thing I want to do is to increase this font size. As I say, it's quite tiny. Um, although it's legible to me, uh, smaller characters can lead to mistakes in reading if you're reading something quickly just because it's so fine. Um, and also it's going to be harder for you to see if you're not on a, a large screen. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's two ways to increasing the font Um the first way is probably the easiest, although I have had problems trying to pick out uh, fonts. There's so many to choose from, you have to try quite a few of them. Um, and that's just to modify the um, etc sysconfig uh, console configuration file. And you basically just alter this first bit where it says lat2-16 
Um, you just modify that bit and it changes the font. And I think I'm correct in saying that you have to choose a font that's appropriate for your character set. So the character set I'm using is 859-1. Um, so that's maybe an issue I've had in the past where I've tried to get a um, character set working that hasn't behaved as I expected. The fonts are in... Let's see if I can remember. Is it user, share, local, or locale? Maybe it's not. Um, let's have another look. Is there a fonts one there? Uh, no, I might have to find them if they are even under the user share. No, I'd love to find them. Um, they're definitely under share. Let's see. Oh, that could be that. Uh, right, okay. Now I can't scroll back. Let's remove the facility to scroll back in the kernel by default and I've not had time to locate if it's something that can be turned on again or if it's hardwired console fonts there it is share console fonts so let's ls minus else forward slash user share console fonts oops console fonts so it's in this directory here on Linux from scratch um, and any one of these files can be used as a console font. And because I want to increase them, you need to choose one with some larger numbers. So this one's 24 pixels wide by 32 pixels wide. So that's quite a big one. Um, and that's basically it. Like I say, I've had issues um, trying to get these to work, some of them. Uh, it does matter, I think... Um, what language you're using and so on. So, uh, for example, to, to use that solar one, you just type in solar 24 by 32 in the console. Um, and if I just get this list again, if you remember, I was using um, lat2-16, I think it was, that one there. That's the one I've got um, set in my console font. Um so that's one way of doing it. But the way I'm going to do it is to uh, use the, the kernel purely because there's fewer choices. Um, it's just easier and it, it works most of the time. Again, there's a caveat here that some, because these require frame buffers, I believe, the console fonts. Um, sometimes this has not worked as if the frame buffer doesn't support it. It does mention. So it's a kind of a way, uh, something you have to play around with yourself to find out what works best for you. And there are advantages and disadvantages. This is obviously easier. I'll just change the uh, font and reboot and it just takes effect. Uh, with the kernel, obviously, you've got to build it and um, install the new kernel. Uh, but the advantage is that it's fixed in the kernel. Nothing can change it. Um, well, it can be overridden, but um, it's it's obviously if you move the kernel around between machines and that session is going to go and you don't have to make any other modifications to config files you just know it's going to work uh, one thing with the kernel is if you do modify the kernel which I'm obviously going to do um, you have to disable the font line in this config file otherwise this will just override what you've set in the kernel and it will just default back to that font there so I've disabled that ready for when I boot the new kernel and I'm going to now go into the sources directory Linux dash Raspberry Pi and you can see or you will see the advantage of keeping the kernel around because I'm hoping when this builds um, it will just build the bit that I've changed and not have to rebuild everything, which is what you'd have to do if you uh, deleted the sources and extracted them. And again, you'd, you'd have to go through rebuilding the whole uh, kernel. And if, if I remember before, it took um, over an hour to build on the Raspberry Pi. I've just remembered something else, of course, with the Raspberry Pi, when it re 
boots if you remember in my previous video um, it defaults to a power save mode so I'm going to just recall the command to set the performance mode just so that uh, the kernel compiles a bit quicker or well, in fact three times quicker um, and if you remember I can also just check um, sorry not echo uh, cat what setting so there's a setting I've just set um, you can also view the frequency CPU info underscore current frequency one underscore in and there you can see it's set to 1.8 gigahertz so that's okay so I'm in the um, kernel source directory so I'm going to run make menu config to get the ncurses uh, configuration editor and this takes a little while to load up because it's got a really load of scripts and things but as you see it's running at full steam so it's as fast as it can go uh, the disk I've got is unfortunately not the fastest it's just an old laptop drive I've got in there um, so it's only 5400 RPM but it's certainly faster than the SD card right so from the main menu the um, kernel configuration I want to go to library routines so it's the penultimate option and again the penultimate option in this uh, sorry what it would be it's already been set uh, normally that's set off um, so it's this penultimate option you want to ensure it's on select compiled in fonts and then the one I select the largest one here is this terminal 16 by 32 and it does actually warn it's not supported by all drivers so I'll just select that do exit twice yes to save the changes and then I just rerun let's see how long it takes rerun the command I used to build the kernel in fact I can recall this I should think uh, DTBS there it is there make J4 Z image modules DTBS so rebuild everything that the kernel uses so that's the Z images remember the kernel itself the modules are all the modules that are built and DTBS that's the little um, sort of I'm not sure exactly what they are some sort of firmware or binary blobs that are required for the um, Raspberry Pi to build so at some point I'll be able to tell that this is um, actually just building what has been changed and it looks like it's this point here now um, it's just adjusting things actually in the kernel um, kernel configuration and as long as it doesn't start spewing a load of lines up the screen then um, it's quite reassuring that it is just building that one bit. The, the disk light is flashing on and off, so it's it's probably checking all the files that need to be rebuilt. And it's identified that the fonts uh, is one of the bits that needs to be built, because that's the bit we just changed. And with any luck, you won't find anything else. It'll just complete the build. So the disk is still hard at work. The script is doing lots of stuff, even though it doesn't seem like it at the moment. And yeah, it's, it's building the final kernel now. It's doing the last bits. So it'll be another minute or so, I guess. So you can see it's created the image now and the last thing it does is it compresses it and that is just about done. Let's wait for the prompt to return.
not sure what it's doing, but it's still doing something. Uh, right, okay, last bit. So that's been built. So what I need to do now is to install it. So I'll just recall the command. Yep, that's it. So the reason why I'm doing all these commands again is because I don't know exactly what's changed. There's, it looks like there's another module created there. So running modules installed, just reinstalls all the modules. Obviously the existing ones will be overwritten and then the new ones will be added in. Um, the next command has got the star.dtb in it. Uh, that's that one there. Yeah, that looks like it. And I'll look for that again. That's to copy the DTPs into the overlays directory. Uh, don't need to copy the readme file again. But the last one I do need to do is to copy the um, Z image file. There. So the Z image is the kernel and that's got to overwrite the existing kernel. So that should be it. So if I now uh, come out and reboot, control alt delete, we should have a new kernel and bigger fonts. Okay, why hasn't that worked? She saved the file. I didn't think I did because it got compiled in. Routines, Tim's font, yes, yeah, definitely there. Um, let me check that I've actually copied the file correctly. Those files are the same with the um, same size, so I'm not quite sure what's happened here. Check the uh, command line boots CMD. Yeah, that looks 
looks okay. Hmm, I can't explain this. And the console, we switched off the font, yep. Oh, this is very strange. Um, well, uh, the only thing I can do uh, to try is a shutdown, but I don't think this is going to make any difference. And I'll just power cycle the Pi. Oh yeah, it should have come up now with the new font so I really don't know why that's not working um, it's worked in the past when I've tested it uh, something unusual gone on there so what I'll attempt to do is to use in that case um, I'll attempt to show the uh, alternatives by modifying the console fonts oh. so let's see if we we'll find a, an appropriate one that will be big enough um, I think there is a terminus one here, or there used to be. I guess I could try this solar one, because it's quite a big one. Uh, see if this activates at all. Um, yeah, I'll try that for a starter. So V I C sysconfig console. And if at any time the kernel one does activate then um we'll see that as it boots and then we'll see this one override it. So it's uh not a big deal. I uh, just uh don't understand why it's not working. Um, I'm not sure if I can rerun the, the init script to do this without booting. Let's try it. Start. Oh yes, oh, crikey, that is big. That is very big. In fact, it looks like it's logged me out as well. That's probably a touch on the big side, but uh, let's see how we go with it. Could stand on the other side of the room to read this one. Okay, it uh, looks a bit strange. Um, I'll try and find one that's slightly smaller, actually, it is rather a large size. Uh, how big was this one? So, dimensions of that was 24 by 32. Um, I could try the Sun one, I've used that before, that's quite a reasonable size. Yeah, I'll try that one, a bit more of a reasonable size that is. Oh. 
forgot to do insert. Insert, it's already on now. So that's it. So I'll restart. Oh, yes, that's not too bad. That's quite a reasonable size. Okay, so hopefully that's um, a little bit bigger. It's not perhaps as big as I want, but uh, as I say, it's a bit hit and miss trying to find um, a font that works and a, a font that uh, works. I'll just have one other scan to see if there's anything on the larger side that might be intermediate. Oh, there's the terminus one. I could try that one. I'll try that one. There's a final test. Oh, done it again. Let's see what this one does. Oh, that's even smaller. Oh dear. Right, okay. Sun 12 by 22 it is then. Right, I'll stick with this now. So, um, yeah, that's the font. Like I said, the kernel one, I can't understand why that's worked. Uh, sorry, why well, it hasn't worked. I've done the right things. I've changed this kernel settings. I've recompiled the kernel. I've copied the image to the boot location. So I really don't understand why it's not working. Um, yes, it's uh, very strange. So the thing I'm going to do now is to um, show how to create a minimal boot partition. Um, so let's go to the boot partition first of all. And you can see we've got all these files here. Um, as I showed before, part of the firmware that's uh, been downloaded from the GitHub is a boot partition. And you can see that's quite a lot similar. Um, it's basically just a copy of that those files. Um, so the ones above are the ones that came on the SD card when I installed the Raspberry Pi image um, onto the SD card and the ones below are from the repository. But as I say we don't need all of these, there's a, like a small subset of files that are required and I'll show which files they are um, and how we can just build a, a minimal um, boot partition. So just to be sure I've got the latest command lines and configs, I'm just going to copy these again. I know I've already done it, but just to be sure, I'm going to copy the command line to the root and the config.txt before I delete all this. And I'm in the boot and I'm going to do an RM minus RF everything. Quite severe, so be careful when you run it that you are in the boot directory. So there you go, I've got uh, I'm in, an, <coughs> excuse me, an empty boot directory. So the first things I'm going to do is copy the command line and the config back into this directory. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the kernel 
from the sources, the kernel we just created. Uh, yep, and we're in the arch arm boot Z image, and we want to name that as kernel seven L dot ing. So now, if we just look in this boot directory, we've got our two configs, uh, two text files, which one's the kernel command line, the other one's the config to conf configure the Pi, and we've got the actual kernel image. Now we need one of the DTBs. We don't need all of them. The only one that I need in particular for the 400 is this fella here. So I'm going to copy that. That is actually part of the kernel as well. Um, if I can remember where it is, is it under DTS, I think. Right, there's loads in there. So if I just look for BCM 2711 and a dash RPI dash 400 dot DTB, that's the file I want. Obviously, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 4, you'll want that one. A Raspberry Pi 3B, you'll want that one. There's a 3B plus there, and so on. There's different um, images for different products. If um, you're unsure which one, um, I believe there's a page on the Raspberry Pi uh, website to, that tells you the details about it. I imagine if you put something in Google or any other search engine, uh, finding out which one you'll need, you'll get, you'll get an answer back. One other thing worth mentioning, this bootco.bin is not required by the Raspberry Pi 400. I don't think it's required by the Raspberry Pi 4 either. Um, that code is built into the uh, EEPROM on, on the machine, so it's not required in your, anymore, but earlier machines you will need to copy bootco.bin. So that file I'm going to copy here as well. So let's have a look at that now. So yeah, there's the DTB file. There's two more files we need. Oh, by the way, we don't need the overlays. Therefore, uh, any additional hardware you might plug into the Raspberry Pi, a uh, uh, standard Raspberry Pi on its own doesn't need any of the files in the overlays. So I won't be creating that directory or copying any files into there. Um, yeah, so the other two files uh, one's called start something dot elf and the other one's a fix up something dot dat and the elf file is the file that actually starts the boot going once the, I believe it's once the um, uh, Raspberry Pi hardware hands it over to the software on the disk to start booting and the fix up is as what it says it's just a fix ups for the start dot elf file. Um, I don't think these files are part of the kernel. I'll just check though. No, they're not there. So these files will have to copy from the um, existing uh, repository that we downloaded the firmware. So we'll have to copy from root firmware boot uh, and there there are the files, there's the fix up ones and there's the start ones and again uh, you need to pick one that's appropriate to your model. Uh, so again that's something that you'll need to investigate. Raspberry Pi 4 just needs one called fix up 4.dat and start 4.elf. So I'm going to copy the start for the elf first. I'll copy that here, and the fix up for dot that, and that is all you need to boot the Raspberry Pi. Arguably, you could get away with the command line and config, but whether it would boot correctly or whether it would know how to boot properly, um, that's uh, another thing. But uh, Realistically, these six files are all you need to boot. So I'm going to do Control D, 
control delay and keep my fingers crossed that I haven't forgotten anything and that the Raspberry Pi does actually boot. Yep, that's looking good. It's started up. The font still hasn't worked for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, but the console script has kicked into action, so that's that's working. And there we go. We have a login prompt and I can log in and you can see there's the kernel that I've built this afternoon about 25 minutes ago um, you can see the time is quarter past uh, yeah that's it so um, if I go to just check that I can actually go to the web, yep, that's working fine. Browser's working fine. And just to check the drives that are mounted, again you can see the root partition is the 4, four 500 meg drive mounted on the root. We've got the boot partition mounted on boot. And again the swap partition um, mounted. Uh, as well SDA2 so I'm really sorry that uh, I don't know why the kernel um, seems to fail that uh, font business I'm really um, puzzled as to why I've done that so many times before on different machines I've even done it on the Raspberry Pi while I was testing and I cannot for the life of me understand why um, that's not working I'll just take one more look at it. So library routines. So that compiled in fonts. Now, uh, now whether whether it's because this one is still here, that might have been it. I thought normally when you select the terminus, that disappears. That could be the problem. Um, yeah, I'll go for one more compile. Oh, I better do the full compile. Uh, image. What I'm thinking is maybe it's gone down that list. I can't remember. I thought that option gets removed. I can't remember for certain though. Um, if it does, then maybe that's the problem. If it doesn't, I don't know the reason why. Maybe it just goes down that list and tries or just uses the first font. So that could be the reason why the font hasn't changed. Um, the fact that the default was still there, so it's just used that one. Um, I guess I probably didn't need to redo all of these builds actually, but um, I've started it now, so I'll have to leave it. Don't want to risk breaking it halfway through. So yeah, I'll just wait a couple of minutes for this to uh, rebuild.
Right, so that has built. Um, I'm only going to copy the Z image. There shouldn't have been anything else that changed. Or maybe the modules. Um, yeah, I'll copy the Z image. And I'll do the modules. Installed as well. I think that should be sufficient. Because this change I've made is only really specific to the kernel. It's not um, a Raspberry Pi specific thing. Right, so... I'm also going to chance my luck and remove the font of editing here and hope that the issue with the default font still being compiled in it was the problem um, was the reason why the bigger font wasn't being used. Okay, yeah, that looks big. Yeah, that, so that, that was the problem then. The default font was still active and it, it chose that. I presume it's because it was first in the list and it just picked that one up. Um, whether there were, was a, change, a way to change the font, the fonts that are compiled in, I don't know. Um, but you, yeah, you can see that this is now the, con the kernel console font. Um, for me, uh, it's a nicer size for the size screen I've got. It's not too big and it's not too small. And there you go. So that's it. Um, yeah, the last sort of video or two have been a bit, bit of a funny thing where things haven't quite worked as expected, but um, like the console font. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed watching the videos and um, seeing how to get Linux from scratch on a different architecture. It's been a nice learning experience for me and I hope it has been for you. Um, I'm planning on keeping this as a side project to see if I can further investigate um, some of the errors that were occurring during the uh, compilation of some, some of the programs. There seems to be a common pattern with some of the errors so uh, I am wondering if there's some configuration I can make to stop those errors from occurring. Um, not masking them, but by actually fixing them by, you know, maybe switching a setting on somewhere or tuning something somehow to, to stop that would be interesting. And I'll be pleased to hear from anyone who, who fancies an experimentation themselves and comes up with something they find. That would be uh, interesting to hear from anybody has a play around as well and discovers some way of fixing these errors so yeah thank you very much for watching again if you've enjoyed the videos if they've been helpful please thumbs up on the, my channel against the video and if you haven't already done so please subscribe um, and you'll get to hear about other videos that I do in a similar sort of vein um, as soon as I get them published thank you very much goodbye